The other thing is confusing medical care with health. There are tremendous differences in longevity within the United States. Mormons in the United States have a life expectancy a decade longer than the average white American. Is this because the Mormons have extraordinary medical care? Or could it have something to do with the fact that they don't drink, they don't take drugs, uh, and they don't go around shooting each other? <laughs> you cite, in Intellectuals and Race, you cite an observation by the intelligence expert, IQ scientist, James Flynn, that just stopped me cold. Mm. After the Second World War, you've got large numbers of, of American troops remaining in Germany. For that matter, there's still several tens of thousands there today. And both black and white American soldiers had children with German women. Mm. And Flynn discovered that those children growing up in Germany mm. showed no IQ differences at all. Mm. The, the, the black kids and the white kids, the same. Quote, quoting intellectuals and race, Professor Flynn concluded that the reason was that the offspring of black soldiers in Germany, and now you're quoting Professor Flynn, grew up in a nation with no black subculture. Yeah. Close quote. Which means what? Which means they experienced exactly the same expectations. Is this the... They, no, no, no. The expectations are external. The culture in which they grew up with was, was not the culture in which black kids grew up in America today. So they had... There's no gangster rap in, uh, uh, that, that, that was pervasively uh, uh, available in Germany. So here's what I'm getting. There is something about black subculture in America today mm. that holds African Americans themselves back? Yes. <laughs> in fact, I, I, I went into this in a previous uh, book on which, uh, about black rednecks and white liberals because that same let's, subculture... We'll, we'll, let's talk about two of your books here. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Because that very sub, same subculture held white, whites in the South back as well. That in the time, this, this uh, mental testing in the First World War turned up, among other things, the fact that uh, whites from various, oh, four or five southern states scored lower on the mental test than, than blacks from four or five northern states. And so it really was a question of the subculture that was there, which was a handicap to both. All right. And so whose job is it to say, wrong subculture, folks, you're, har you're harming yourselves? Well, I would think in an ideal world that intellectuals might take on that task. But uh, the world that we live in, I've noticed, is not, not ideal. All right. Uh, is, is a study that was done by the New York Times of all people, all, all some years ago, uh, where they tried to, to uh, show the 10 poorest counties in the United States. Uh, and they mentioned which ones they were and so on. Uh, uh, and and uh, it turns out that six of those 10 counties had a popula the population that was from 90% to 100% white. Now, in the New York Times, they didn't mention the race of the people, but once they told me the counties, I looked it up, and in fact, I followed the average income in those six counties over a span of 50 years. And in all fi those 50 years, all six of those counties had a median income lower than the median income of black Americans. Now, and so those the people in those counties uh, faced zero racism, because they were white and indistinguishable from all, from all other whites. Uh, they, they didn't have a legacy of slavery, and yet there, there they were. Uh, and and it, 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 you, you have to ask then, clearly there must be other things that cause poverty. We can't just assume that because people of a given race have uh, more poverty than some other, other, other people, that race must be the reason. But this has become the automatic kind of thing and I think most people would be uh, quite surprised. One of the things that, that happens is that behavior matters. And, and, and you see that in so many uh, uh, different ways. Uh, for, for, for example, uh, I, think, I think most people would be surprised to learn that despite the fact that bl blacks as a whole have uh, a higher poverty rate than whites as a whole, 
black married couple families have, a, have for more than a quarter of a century, every single year, had a poverty rate under 10%. Uh, and in most of those years, the national poverty rate was not as low as 10 percent. So it, it, it's not a question. And you say, well, this is due to institutional racism. In that case, does that mean that the racists make an exception for blacks who are married? I mean, do racists either know or care whether blacks are married? The, none of these glib uh, explanations stands up to the slightest empirical study. The hopelessness. Hopelessness is one of the big products of the, of the race industry, that, that you, have, you have no chance. I remember giving a talk at Marquette, and at the end of the talk, among the questions that was asked, a young, again, young black man got up and he said, even though I am graduating from Marquette University, what hope is there for me? And uh, having gone through college when I was in the 50s, I don't remember any blacks saying that in the 1950s when there was a lot more obstacles to overcome than there were when this guy is graduating from Marquette. But you, but you have to pr pr produce that kind of feeling in order to serve the interests of those in the race industry. Final question then. <clears throat> maybe, we can, maybe we can think in terms of that young man at Marquette. Or let, let's put it this way. Somewhere watching this interview, there's a young Thomas Sowell. There's an African-American who's smart and wants to do something with his life. What's, it se seems to me I've al we've already got one piece of advice you'd offer to him is stay away from the, from the racist industry. Stay away from the what, race what hustlers. Ad, what advi race hustlers. What advice would you give a young Thomas Sowell? How do you make something of yourself as an African-American in America today? the way anybody else would. You equip yourself with skills that people are willing to pay for. Once again, thank you for watching. A famous quote by Thomas Sowell, have we reached the ultimate stage of absurdity where some people are held responsible for things that happened before they were born, while other people are not held responsible for what they themselves are doing today? Well, sadly, the answer to that is yes. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And until the next video, stay free.